Hey, this is George, and this is Real Talk with George and Frazier. Frazier is actually logging on right now. You know, he has a slow internet connection, so he'll be with us shortly. But um, we have a good show at the top of the week. You know, we like these type of shows where we have uh, black entrepreneurs that are doing things for our communities that are putting things out there and uh, good service base and um, working type program. So today we have with us Mr. Adayinka. Welcome to Real Talk. Nice to meet you, George. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for being on the show. Greatly appreciate it. You're welcome. And you are the CEO of Melon People. So yeah. I love that. I'm not even going to try to explain it. How about you just tell the listeners and the, and the fans, um, what is it you do? And explain the Melon People app. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm so excited. You know, we've been planning this for almost two months. And I, I you know, been waiting for it. And when I saw the text, I almost forgot. I'm like, yes, now. So it's two months already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited to be here, and I want to thank you for the privilege to come, you know, and speak on your show. It's, uh, I'm not taking our it pleasure. For, it's yeah, I'm our not taking pleasure. It and, uh, you know, we're looking for this kind of opportunity, you know, to get out here and, and tell people about the products and services that we we have. Right, Melanin People is a, is a social economic app. Okay. Right, a socioeconomic focused app that bridges um, the Black American, African American, Africa, and the African diaspora. Okay. And our goal is to create an environment or a community where we can intentionally. I want to use the more the word more. I said more intentionally. We can more intentionally and more consciously support one mm -hmm. another right. to equip ourselves socioeconomically and to increase our wealth capacity. Okay. So that's the goal of the Melanin People app. So it's a social app, you know, we it's social business, social professional, and most importantly, social economics focused. So that's the app that we've created for you know for everyone that has the melanin skin. And our goal is that we can bridge the um, the gap between Black America, Africa, and then the African diaspora. That's the goal. Beautiful. I like that because you said African American, Africa, and then the African diaspora. So for instance, you know that in Brazil, it has the largest population of Black people, slaves, you know, that, that there in the country of Brazil, you know, mm -hmm. in, in places like Colombia, there's there's black people that speak Spanish who were former slave owners and things of that nature. So yeah. I'm glad you included that because every time people hear about black or black American or African, they forget about all of our other children that have been scattered throughout the world through no choice of their own, you know. And I feel like um, the economic disadvantages and the economic opportunities that we sometimes complain about or take for granted, we forget that there's others out there that have it just a little bit worse than we do. So that being said, when you're saying bridging the gap, are you talking more about microfinancing? Are you talking more about um, developmental projects? What scale are you talking about? Because as you know, in Africa, I'm from, I'm from West Africa. I'm from Liberia, by the way. So oh, as you know, you know, um, they started microfinancing for women who were selling market, for instance, going and selling whatever it is they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, that was a big thing here 10 years ago um, to be able to push that. But selling market doesn't, how do I say this, fit into um, business development, everything from infrastructure projects to internet, to cell phones, to communication, to government backed projects like building roads, making mm -hmm. sure we have solid schools and things of those type natures. So you have the very, very, very small, like I said, the microphones and, you know, everybody selling market to the very, very, very big government backed projects and things of that nature, or not even government, private projects that will, that will bring um, economic development and economic engines to these specific areas. So again, I'm 
it, it was a long way to ask the same question. How do you, how do you guys uh, dif differentiate that, or do you look at all of that in the same piece of pie? So we 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 um we the way we want to bridge the gap is that we, we want to focus on technology, and we want to focus on education. Nice, right? So we want to focus on technology and education, and once we're able to do that, we believe that we can now transition into bridging the gap in terms of infrastructure, right? Because if you look at the old African leadership holistically, we have problems, right? right? And most of our leaders don't are not really taking care of us. Right. That's why right now, you're welcome, Frazier. Yeah, how you doing, brother? Nice, to connect, nice to connect with you. So as I was saying, right? Mm -hmm. Most of our leaders in Africa, especially, I mean, I'm from Nigeria. I'm Nigerian-American, but I'm, I'm from Nigeria. But you see that in Nigeria right now, as an example, I can use Nigeria, I can use Uganda, I can use some other countries too, but let's use Nigeria right now. Um, and everybody says down of Africa, which I don't, right now, it's, it's just a shadow of that statement. We're just a shadow of that statement because millions of us are out here in the diaspora, you know, and we're just scattered everywhere. Our kids, our children, grandchildren can't even speak the native language. You know, they're not interested in the culture. They don't even know the culture because they are, they are, they are now African-Americans. Right. They're not Africans anymore. Right. So I believe that when we, when we equip ourselves socioeconomically, and our world capacity increases, right? If Frazier now becomes a multimillionaire, and George becomes a multimillionaire, and Yinka becomes a multimillionaire, right? And then we multiply some more than multimillionaires. And we, we're, we're forward thinking and we're thinking in the same capacity. Right. Now I can say that, oh, I want to go build some schools in Nigeria. And then Frazier's mm -hmm. going to be like, okay, let's, let's do that. Why not? Let's just do that. And then we go ahead and build schools or we build hospitals and we equip it with world-class facilities, which is what our government won't do because right. it won't do it this year. The, the, the present president in Nigeria hasn't done it in six years and has been going to England to take care of himself whenever he's sick, he's sick right? But there's no world-class hospital where he's, he's confident enough to put himself inside that hospital in a nation that is leading. And because these people, it's funny. Oh, that's crazy, right? right? Yeah. You know, I know. The reason why I'm laughing is because, Yinka, not to cut you off, but that has been systemic throughout the culture of Africa or West Africa. So, for instance, you had leaders like uh, Idi Amin that would go to a foreign country, to Cuba, for, for uh, medical purposes because there was no established hospital facility there in that particular country. Mm -hmm. um, you would have... I mean, even leaders, I mean, from any of the ECOWAS countries, you name it, wherever they were colonized from or their colon, colon their parentage was, that's where they went for health benefits. Exactly. In Liberia, we came to the United States, everything yeah. from dental. And so, and, and so now I'm going to ask a question back. And so who do we blame? We can't blame nobody. This man will is going to pack the, the presidential jet on the anger. And he's going to be paying t several thousands of Great, Great Britain pounds every single day for taking right. that yeah. space. Right. And that's money that he can use to build a, a little hospital. I'm not talking of a mega one. Mm -hmm. A little yeah. hospital in three months he could build that could take care of just two people that's going to be world class. Now, yeah. because these people wouldn't do it, we need to start looking at ways through which we can now you know, create the capacity that we want. Right. And exactly. start getting these things in our own communities. Because, I mean, they won't stop us if we, if we say we want to build schools or one. They won't stop you, right? Mm -hmm. As long as you have the capacity to build it. Now, right. because I don't have the capacity to build it right now, I'm saying, can we come together and create commerce and create an environment where we know that it's working for our white counterparts and create this, this kind of systems around us, just you know, just because we you need to take care of your community, it doesn't right. mean that you won't go and buy Gucci or you won't go and buy Prada. 
or your right. woman, can you give me those names? Uh, Calvin Klein or whatever. <laughs> it doesn't mean it's not going to, no, it's not stopping us from doing that. It's just nope. giving us more capacity to do that. Right. right? Exactly. So we will have to think first of the community that we serve, right. which is Black America, Africa, and the right. African diaspora. Because right. once we get hold of our commerce and their economics, most of us, even if we still love to live in America, we'll go we'll go to Africa more often. Yeah. You see? Right. We right. go to Africa more often and we can do trade. So the essence of the Melanin People platform is that we come together. Right now, I haven't visited any other African country. And it's poor. If you grade me on that, I got a zero of a hundred. Okay. I'm exactly. really, really poor. I haven't been to Liberia. I haven't been to Ghana. I haven't been to Senegal, Zambia, Zimbabwe, South Africa, Johannesburg, Lesotho. I'm really poor. I only see these things on the on the map. I don't know what the food looks like over there. I don't know what a, what the clothes look like over there. I mean, I know what Ghana Kente looks like because it's popular, right? right? I've never I've never touched it before. I've never eaten Ghanaian food. I've never been to Liberia. Right. The only thing I know is that there was a Liberia civil war. That's all everybody shouts about and talks about. But that's not all about Liberia. That's right. And I know George Ware because he was a soccer guy and then he became president. I mean, oh, okay. what I, <laughs> I need to know I un and understand Liberia, my brothers, my sisters. And now I need to be able to transact businesses once I understand you guys and be able to transact and move money and wealth across borders and equip ourselves. Now, over 650 million people in Africa have access to mobile phones. That's right. That's incredible. That's incredible. That's a lot of numbers. Exactly. And you know what those numbers can do? That numbers can, can make you a billionaire or even a trillion or whatever. It exactly. can generate capacity in those continents. And yeah. that's the leverage that we're, we're working on right now. That's why we created a space so that I can learn about your culture. You can learn about my culture. I can learn more about your history because I don't know. Most of us right now, we don't even know any African history. Yeah. If you ask me any question now, I'm going to fail. I just started looking at Chaka Zulu. You know? <laughs> yeah. Because you're going because to know. You're going to know what's going on. I said, you know, I'm right. looking for history, downloading PDF, because I need to know what's going on with Chaka Zulu. You know? Exactly. I can tell my kids about his stories, about the Egyptian pyramids, and we, 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 we're not doing that. Right. So this platform is huge. It's much more than social media platform is that's why i said we want to focus on education and tech exactly we need to understand one another's history right. now i've been seeing online online on facebook everywhere people on um, clubhouse different kind of yep. apps people are talking about africa african americans yep. ato heads uh, people are just so confused everybody's just arguing everybody's just fighting and i'm like exactly. no that's not what we need to do right now we exactly. need to understand the perceptive or, or, or the perspective of the African-American. I never knew about African-American until I got to the United States of America. What I knew about African-Americans yeah. was Whitney Houston can sing beautifully. You know, <laughs> she acts, you know. I know about Tupac, B.E., yeah. Snoop Dogg. You so know, basically, all you knew was American and, pop culture. And I know, I know right. that they can shoot guns and they can rap and they wear big chains. Mm -hmm. I yeah. didn't know, and I knew maybe when we get to university, we we started seeing gifted hands for Ben Ben Carson. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's all you know. You don't know the African American history. They True. don't teach us in schools. Nope. They don't mm -hmm. teach us in schools. We don't know anything about the African American history. So the only thing media, media shows us is what we know. But right. when we go to America, we started seeing African-American doctors, yeah. African-American professors, African-American right. businesswomen, African-American doctors. Wow. I saw the same website with African-American business coaches, speakers. Yeah. I started looking at what's going on around here. 
Yeah. And then I still see the other part, but that's not the definition of the African American. Right. Definitely. And I don't know the history. Then I started educating myself. We're here when we see the Black History Month. We started learning history, Martin Luther King. You know, we started learning more. And I started watching more videos and I understood better. So yeah. that is the essence of this platform. It's it's much more than just, you know, we come and click and like and share. But most importantly, at the end of the day, once we understand one another, we start building trust, we start building love. And we need to, if I'm thinking of, you know, spending $6,000 right now on my logistics company, I need to think about Fraser. I said, Fraser, oh, you have that other mechanic shop. Can you do this alignment for this 40 vans? And you said, yeah. How yeah. much? Oh, I can do it for one twenty dollars. Okay, let's do it. That's four thousand eight hundred dollars. Right. I don't have yeah. to think about going to Google. I don't need to go to Google. All I need to go is to go to the Melanin People app and search for um, van alignment or van auto mechanic in Houston, Texas, or whatever I am, and it brings them up. And I approach them and say, "You guys, can you do this job? I guess I can do it. All right." And we do the job and we transfer the wealth. Exactly. That's the so, goal. Of, I'm just giving you the holistic, you know, no, I, I understand. You have all the light, all the share, all the things, all the beautiful stuff. But our focus is on education. We need to educate our mind. And then we need our young people to start seeing each and every one of us on those apps, reading yeah. about our stories, reading about our struggles. We don't know about where we came from and what we have right now. Right. And then we need to go into the inner communities and start teaching, teaching our young people, teaching them how to be entrepreneurs, how to be a responsible adult in the society. You know, yep. so that when we go back to our inner communities in Detroit, in Memphis, at Baltimore, yeah, in Houston downtown. When we go back and start building those places in the third world, in the fifth world, then our young people are educated not to destroy the things that we put back into the community. True. Absolutely right. You're right. Absolutely it's it's right. complicated. I'm going to pause right now so you guys can. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, what you're saying, we've so had true. guests on that have said the exact same thing. But here's the problem that we, everybody in the Black community has. One, like you said, you don't understand the history of African Americans. See, I have the luxury that my father is Liberian. He's from uh, one of the indigenous tribes there, but my mother is black American. My mother's grandmother is from Florida and she uh, um, basically she is the great, great granddaughter of slaves. Okay, so I have two different perspectives. I am uniquely a black um, African American, believe it or not. Okay, because I can go back to Grandida and be okay, and I can stay right here in Jackson, New Jersey, and be just fine. <laughs> you see what I mean? But I understand both histories, I understand both dualities. And the duality is when we were slaves here, they stripped all of that from us to be able to control us. So we have no knowledge of self. And every time we try to get knowledge of self through whatever medium you see through history that the, the white dominance has always shut it down. Whether they killed our leaders, whether they've locked them up or they put them on drugs, that was the way to be able to control them. And kind of the same thing has happened in Africa where our leaders are controlled by USAID uh, and other instruments to where, like for instance, you have in Liberia, you had an uneducated, well, he had at least a sixth grade education, maybe a second grade reading level. But when Dole came to power, he was an indigenous person that cared about the struggle of his people. Mm. That was the real reason why they had to remove him because he wasn't part of that whole program of United States first, Congo people this, blah, blah, blah. He cared actually for the people. And so when he wouldn't move, they moved him. Okay. And you have those same type things. People who are not used to having $10 now in, tar now in charge of the Ministry of Finance. <laughs> you yeah. see what I mean? So it becomes intoxicating. I know that a lot of the struggles that we have mm -hmm. in this particular country 
Bianca, so you know, is the fact that we call it crab in the barrel type syndrome, where we're either afraid of somebody that looks like us, or we don't want to see that kind of person succeed. So we'll go ahead and give a contracting job to the white person down the street, whereas Frazier does the exact same yep. thing, but we won't even give Frazier the opportunity. Or if we give Frazier the opportunity, we'll beat him down. So Frazier yep. will quote me a job for $5,000 to hang on the drywall in this house, right? White man down the street will do it for $10,000. We'll say, okay, Frazier, we want you to do the job, but I only got 4,700. Whereas we were going to pay the white man his whole $10,000 to do the job. So those yeah. are some of the things that we struggle with in this particular country due to the this, this, this systemic abuse that is generational throughout our entire system, our entire process. You know, I'm saying that to say, you know, a lot of people don't understand. A lot of people think that Egyptians are the color of the uh, Ottoman and the Moors that you see today. No, Egyptians were actually black folks. Those mm -hmm. were the ones that built the, the pyramids that are there today. The Arabs didn't come down into Northern Africa until the early 18th, maybe 17th century, maybe a little bit earlier where they took over. So people always have that perception that the language was uh, uh, Arabic in yeah. Northern Africa, places like uh, Algeria, Egypt, and all these other places, and it wasn't. We had our own language. We were smart. We were builders. We were innovators. So much so that it's in our it's in our psyche. psyche excuse me. What does that mean? Black poverty is different than white poverty. I don't care what anybody says. You, I don't know if you know this, but sometimes our kids build toys out of milk cartons because we can't afford to pay for toys. Yeah. You see what I mean? Our exactly. minds work a little bit differently when it comes to that. So I'm saying all that to say you want to interweave all of this, but we also have to understand where we are, what we're doing, and basically where we want to go on both fronts. Now, what's the African perspective? In Liberia, you can't even afford to buy a, a cup of rice, but you want to buy textbooks. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> you yeah. see what I mean? And so without those interventions in place, people like you, people like myself that understand that duality can say, OK, look, we're going to raise $10,000 to buy sixth grade textbooks or elementary school books that we're going to take to the public schools in Liberia and give them out to them, not make them pay for it. You see what I'm saying? It just doesn't work. There's no connect. And unfortunately, in West Africa specifically, we've become so dependent on World Health Organization, uh, any other nonprofit organization that's bringing money to the country. We forgot that the resources that we have in Africa go someplace else. That's why the Chinese are there right now enveloping all the resources because China is one of the biggest economies in the world and they're running out of resources in China. You see what I mean? And yeah. we don't understand that. All of the whole of Africa now. You don't understand that. Okay, I mean, think yeah. about it. And I said this at the last show. All the diamonds they put out of that mountain in, for De Beers, where did all that go? They still got dirt roads in South Africa and shanty towns to this day. It went yeah. to go build Europe. All the resources they pulled out of Nigeria from all the oil and everything. The Nigerian people were so stupid. They didn't know how to uh, drill oil for themselves. They gave it to a British company. All that went there. All the money, all the oil they found in, in the DRC, uh, uh, Congo, okay? The people were so naive that they went and gave the biggest oil contract to the French. And it's on the law. Liberia just found oil off its coast. What did the Oman do? She went and gave it to the oil drilling company here in Texas. You see what I mean? Yeah. So all of our resources that we have that are supposed to be for us, we are so stupid that we give it to somebody else, then we complain we don't have rice to eat. That's the yeah. African side. And, and you know that from the and from the in the tech in the tech industry too. Like uh, we don't have the the, fun, the the kind of funds. We don't have access to the funds that white people do have access to. And it's not like we're just trying to say because we're black people. It's on the internet, you know. Black people don't have access to the Silicon Valley multi-million dollars. Multi-billion dollars. Yeah, yeah multi-billion dollars. We don't have access to that. So like this kind of platform, I've been bootstrapping it myself for almost three years. Mm -hmm. And I spent a lot of money. Like if you go to the website and you see the website, you see the apps, you see everything, you see the infrastructure behind it. 
I've been spending my own money every single time. Mm-hmm. I do digital marketing, Facebook, Instagram, all this stuff. I still I do every day. I do everything. And I don't even have the capacity to bring anybody on board. Right. To yeah. be a member, you know, of my team because how am I going to pay? Right. Exactly. Just struggling to keep the app alive and do marketing. And then you come on board, you think that when you come and you show people, like the people in your community, that, oh, guys, look at what I've done. Like, you think yeah. they're going to flock to it? No. Right. The community won't flock to it. Right. You're right. Because why? We don't have the same, because of the same thing that we've been explaining since, which is why we need to come together and educate ourselves. Right. Right. We all flock to new apps that are made today by, you know, our counterparts. We all flock to the, to the place like millions. We download it. They don't pay us. We tell every single, every single member of our family, our cousins, our nephews, our nieces, our grandfathers, we tell them that, oh, I just found this app, you download it. But when one of us, when we do ours, you will have to go beg every single individual. Like, right. please download this app, just check it out. Right. And people will think that people will come and, and download the app but no, we have to do a lot of a lot of work to get one person to download the melanin people have. At the same time, we still have the problems of funding. Like there's this new app that everybody's going crazy about. I'm not sure if you guys have it. I also have it. I'm not going to yeah. mention the name, but we're all going crazy about it right now. And that app, you know, millions of black people, millions of Africans, millions of people in Ghana and Liberia, wherever, are on that app. Right. And number one, we don't have any any percentage in, in those companies. It's not owned by any single one of us. Which one is owned by any single one of us? We're using StreamYard right now. I don't think it's owned by us. Yeah. Right? No, it's we use, not. I, use, I yeah. use WhatsApp on my phone. I yeah. use WhatsApp. I can't do without WhatsApp. Um, people are pinging me from my work right now because I have another company that I run. The ping in my right now, I can see that. We all use that. Yeah. We use Skype. We use Zoom. We use, um, keep mentioning, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram. Which one is owned by us? Right. And yeah. you know, in 2020, the all revenue from the App Store and Play, and Play Store was about 111 billion US dollars. Yes. Right? Yeah, right. And if we do the math, we're going to say how much of that billion dollars came back to the black community? Uh, zero. Uh, no, I mean, yo. maybe, maybe something, man. No, but zero. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. No, you're absolutely right. One percent, give or take one percent. On every, not even one percent. Not even one percent. Because well, zero, 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 zero. it's not going to be up to one percent. <laughs> no, not even one percent. I thought it does for now. <laughs> because we don't even own we don't even but, own the platforms we don't have those chances like other people do yeah you see and I mean? then we use it like I, I tell people every day that i work at facebook I'm, i've been working at facebook for almost 15 years or 10 years i say yeah. 10 12 years why because when i wake up in the morning i like i comment i share yeah you know and right now there's no way I can do it right now that I wouldn't work for Facebook because I'm stuck with I'm stuck with Instagram, I'm stuck with WhatsApp, and I'm stuck with Facebook. I right. work in valid employee, right? But I maybe volunteer because I don't get paid. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> the, problem is, <laughs> the problem is I don't get paid, and I've not received one pen from Zuckerberg. Right. Since yeah. I've been using Facebook to say, "Hey, bro, thank you for using Facebook for the past one ten ten years." And this is a pen for me, or like maybe something, paper, a sticker that I can put on my hair. Exactly. You know, we don't have ownership. And ownership is key. Absolutely. Exactly. Ownership right. is vital. And that's why we need to. I'm not even talking about myself. I need more of you. I need Fraser to create another Melanin People app. Maybe just a messaging app that we're going to flock to. I need you to go ahead and create another pay, uh, PayPal that I can integrate into Melanin people as a payment yeah. gateway so that when people start buying that, those stuff, when we get 65, think about it, 650 million people have access to mobile phones in Africa. 
Yeah. We're not talking about America. We're not talking about Caribbean. Not here. We're not even talking about people in Europe. Yeah. Now, if we convert 10% and leave the 90% to our brothers and sisters on this side, we convert 10% of the 650 million people, it's yeah. 65 million people using the melanin people app. Yeah. And then out of the 65 million people, judge as maybe a payment gateway system so that I don't, I don't have to integrate Square right. or integrate um, PayPal. Yep. Then I integrate the judge payment gateway. Right. Melanin people have. So that every time someone swipes a card, you get a percentage of that money. All right. And then we create a, a black LinkedIn. Yeah. It's not going to stop us from still having LinkedIn on the phone, which is fine. You know, I still have LinkedIn. I have all, we're still going to have all the apps. It's fine. Yeah. But we're trying to redistribute. Right. Redistribute this wealth capacity. Now, if you have a black LinkedIn profile, uh, the website or app, then right now I connected LinkedIn to the app. I, if you guys log into the business profiles for us to be able to validate black CEOs as yeah. one of the companies, we have to link LinkedIn because LinkedIn is the guy and LinkedIn is owned by Microsoft. You see? Yeah. And exactly. that's the place where we have the old black people here. I know, I'm know. i sure you have. You guys have LinkedIn. I do have LinkedIn. And right. that's the only way we can validate right now. But if you, if you have a platform like LinkedIn, but for black professionals all over, then we'll be able to connect that to your, to your app or your website and validate people via your website. Right. And maybe for that validation and for the traffic that we send, and to give, we're giving them free promo, like we're giving them backlinks to, to LinkedIn right now. So if we do that, then you also, you are equipped to become, to earn millions of US dollars in 2021. Yeah. And that's how we, we create this space. That yeah. is how we create this space. There's a guy that I met on, 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 I met this guy on Clubhouse. Do you know that this guy said in 2017 he created an exact app like like Clubhouse? Until now, nobody's using the app. Nedo. I don't know if you guys have heard it. If you're watching us right now, please download this guy's app. This guy is, is a black African-American man that created the same app that looks exactly like Clubhouse. Oh, wow. He has created his own before Clubhouse. And we're not on the app. And we don't know about this guy's app. This is a problem that we have. Right. Can, yeah. you, see? Can you see? This app has been before Clubhouse. Yeah. That's crazy. So that is a problem. And that is why I, I esteem ownership and educating ourselves to understand that all these apps that you see are not just apps. These are companies. These are corporations. Now, if you start diving deep into all these corporations and looking at the demographics, you also see that there's marginalization and there is a challenge for us as people of color in these places. Even though you see the equal opportunity employer, things like that, man, you forget about it. That's right. So that is why we need to wake up. It's time to wake up. It doesn't mean we'll still, we won't still use the app. This is not, this is not segregation. Because we're still gonna use Facebook, we're still gonna use StreamYard, right. but we will move in the direction where we self equip ourselves mentally, social economically, right. more consciously, and put in more effort to support one another. This is like this is like um, preaching in a church. Like I'm talking right now, it's like I'm preaching in a church because <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm passionate about it. We need to understand that. Exactly. Because it's all about money. Black Lives Matter is all about money. I was watching different, I, I've been watching some, some I've, I, I watch a lot of documentaries and I read a lot this right now, looking at different videos, what's going on. It's about money. If someone sees you in a white neighborhood right now and sees that you have these nice cars and everything, and, and you, don't get me wrong, and you're making your money legitimately. Maybe you, you're into Forex, you're into investment, and but you don't go to work like irregular people. And they say, this guy's black? Why you get yeah. all this money? I get all these cars. Very soon you're going to get a car visit where the, the cops is going to come. Exactly. 
They're going to come and ask you what's going on. How you have all these cars? What's going on? What are you doing? Exactly. <laughs> because the, the battle and the and the battle that we fight right now and the challenges that we have is, is about economics. That's right. And exactly. we need to we need to get it right. And tech industry, even though we we, we, we don't have the same um we don't have the same access to funds, is one of the ways through which we can build this empire. Right. We don't have access to phone, but we have millions of people. 48 million African Americans in the United States of America. 10% of that number is 4 million. Do you know how, how right. much 4 million is going to mean to your app if you have 4 million African Americans on your app? Even if you have 500,000. Exactly. Oh, you, yeah. can be, you can be generating $500,000 every single month. That is a right. lot of money. And that means you can provide jobs for people. Exactly. That well, let me means, ask you, what yeah, partnerships, it's, what, it's, what, it's, I agree with you 100%, but what partnerships exactly. are you do you have in place to push that? Like, I would like for you, uh, when we get done. Maybe, you maybe you're the first partnership, because that's a problem. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Right. Right? I don't know you. Right. I haven't, I haven't met you. You know, you haven't met me. But you, you saw that this... Okay, I have some partnerships, so let me rewind. So there's a woman. <laughs> let me rewind. <laughs> Before some people start watching this video, I'll tell you. <laughs> I have some partnership, right? So now, because um, I know people will learn from the video too. So do not despise the days of small beginnings. So okay. I have partnership, okay? So now let me tell you about a partnership. That I have. So that's this woman that downloaded the app and just said she's been looking for a black one app forever. And the ones that she downloaded wasn't really good. And when, when she saw this one, she liked it. Yeah. And she's in love because this is this is top class, is world class, and she couldn't believe it. And I didn't know that she has a radio station. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she's been running the melanin people advert on a radio station for free since the beginning of January. Right. Nice. So that's a partnership. So if you go to our website, if you go to um to to my website to the melaninpeople.com and you go to the menu tab on the podcast you see put online radio because I had to put a radio station on my on my on my website. Right. Because yeah. I haven't seen I haven't seen anyone like this before in my life. I haven't met her before and she's running if you if you go on the radio right now you hear the melanin people advert maybe after some music is played. Our radio station is Onyx Urban Radio, and it's in it's in North Carolina. Okay, and her name is a uh, lovely Curtis, and she, you know, and, and I haven't met her before, but if we're gonna do a conference or anything, or even if I sell this company, you know, you think yeah. I won't send her something, or even right. if, if I start making millions, I'm gonna send her something. I'm gonna yeah. help her to get a radio to the next level. So, and our radio station now is the first radio station on the melanin people website which we're going to also put inside the app in a few if, in a few months time right so we can integrate live black radios into the app okay right. and there's another people some guy that downloaded the app i saw their videos and i loved it and i had them oh who made a video and so i made the video myself so if you see the melanin people adverts there's a one black guy talking i haven't seen those guys before in Nigeria, and I hired them because they downloaded the app. Right. And I've given them contracts and helped them to get more jobs. Nice. And that is what I'm talking about. Right. You nice. see? That is what I'm talking about. I was convinced to even send the woman some 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 tips. I'm still going to send her some tips this morning because I can't believe she's running adverts for free. I haven't seen that right. in my entire life. Yeah, she right. even put on she put on a competition on her own Facebook page and said, "Oh, my friends, I saw this app, this black app. If you guys download it, I'm gonna put you in for a raffle to win twenty dollars." I, I haven't done that myself. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> you're surprised, Frazier. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the post on Facebook. I'm like, what? Out there. Like, what's she trying to do now? <laughs> you know, but that also helps you to know that there are good people out there. Exactly. Right. Who will support them. you and not expect anything in return? And God is gonna send them your way. So we yeah. have partners. Those are the kind of partnerships that I have. But right now, I'm looking for money. 
I was reading about Clubhouse. Clubhouse raised uh, $12 million at 1,500 users on the platform. Right. And about nine people walked in the company. I, I walk in this company alone. And I've, you know, since December, over, over 9,000 people are active users on the app. Almost 17,000 to 18,000 downloads on iOS and Android. Right. Nice. So why shouldn't I, I mean, if you look at the scale of 1,500, $12 million raised, I'm almost like times six of what they've done. So I should be able to raise $72 million. Right. And I also have iOS and Android. They only have iOS. Right. Yeah. You see? So we need you need money because money is important. And our people are also celebrity driven. If we want to get a big a big celebrity right now to endorse the app, you see, yeah. what do we have to do? You can't ask them to do it for free because you want to take up their time. You right. have to pay. Do I have the kind of money to pay? No. That's at this point in time, I need money. I need to raise money because now the app is there and you can see that thousands of people have already downloaded the app. If you get on it right now, people are posting. I'm checking in real time right now. There are people on there from Africa, people on them from Australia. I say people from, from the United States of America. People are using the app. So it means that this is what people need this kind of application. Now we need to raise money. So well, now I'm looking for angel investors. I'm looking for, I don't, I'm, I'm trying to think and get advice on the best route to go, you know, angel investment or equity crowdfunding. But what I need right now in terms of, you know, moving forward is you need to raise funds. Because right. if you think about it, even if you have to, uh, what's it called? Even if we have to bring in students from HBCUs as yep. interns, we still need to pay them. Right. Even if you're paying them just for the whole month, I give them a tip of one thousand dollars, one thousand five. If I have ten of them, that's ten thousand dollars that needs to go out. Right. Yeah. Please, if please. I have five, that's five thousand dollars that need to go out every single month, and you still right. need to run digital campaigns. I'm not a marketing professional. Now, at this point, I need to bring in a marketing professional right. that understands yeah. branding, that understands digital marketing, and we need to do PR. I've emailed a lot of yeah. companies for PR. They want money. Right. Yeah. Nothing is free. That's so true. that's the point where I am right now. You know, we have a product. It's solid. People want it. In the app, we have the marketplace. In the app, we have the business directory. In the app, we can have a business profile or a personal profile. We have news feed. And this week, we'll, we'll, uh, we're going to deploy the forums which means you can start discussions in the forums on different subjects and different things that affect or different things that you care about, you know, as, as a black queen, as a black king, as right. an African, as an African American, we can start discussions on how we want to, you know, move forward. And in the next couple of months, we're going to implement audio, not like it's not going to be live audio, but we're going to imp yeah. implement something like an audio into the forum. Mm -hmm. So that we can it can be loaded up with data and information. So that's where we're going. And one of the goals also is to create an educational org so that George can come in and, and, and give us information on I don't know, you know, your expertise. Maybe what's yeah. your expertise, sir? <laughs> Real estate, health and fitness, everything. Yeah, hey, that's what I'm talking about. Now you know, we need people to come in and teach us health, health, health and fitness. We need people to come in and teach us, you know, even becoming, becoming, especially young adults, young adult boys, young, young men, you know, young women. We need people to come and teach us on mental health, teach right. us on, on finances, teach us on, on being a responsible employee, employ, what do you call it, Empl employee right. in the workplace. I lead a company right now, and I have a lot of people working there. And you see the way sometimes they tell me, you know, they just they tell me I don't give a f. f you know, they just talk like it's not a professional environment. Yeah. So we need to do things like this. We need to, you need to teach us about credit because I'm right. asking people, do you have credit? Are you building your credit? They don't know. 
I'm asking a young 26, 27 year old man. I said, "What's your goal in buying your first house?" The guy looked at me like, "What's wrong with this guy?" Yes, right. Exactly. <laughs> right. What's wrong with this guy? Are you are you okay asking me that question? But I thought that was what he should be thinking about. Right. If you have two kids and you're working, you need to think about okay, how do I build get my? If it doesn't necessarily mean that you be living in that house, it could mean that it's gonna be a house that you. You, you buy, and then you're going to rent it out. Right. Yeah. You right. see? So we need classes like this. And we want to create this educational hub. Like for me right now, I'm a chemical engineer. Okay? So I have a master's in chemical engineering, a master's in petroleum engineering. And it means that I can teach undergraduates some classes. Yeah. Or I can teach them how to be successful on, on, on learning skills in becoming an engineer. Right. I can exactly. give advice in terms of mentorship. And if I set up the educational workspace in the Melanin People app, I can ask them to pay me $5 for 30 minutes. Right. Exactly. Just to appreciate my time. And if I'm bringing about money now, but everybody's going to smile. You know, but I don't we, I don't want to, you know, but because of intellectual, uh, uh, what's it called? What's the IP intellectual, intellectual, yeah. um, what, what, what's the name? Intellectual properties. Yeah, properties. Yeah, I don't want to disclose things that we haven't done yet, but it's a way for us to make money, obviously. Right. Yeah. Now think about knowledge sharing where even if you do it for $1 for 30 minutes, it's not about the money you make. But I, we can do a simple math right now. If you take a class in Elton Wellness, for some of us that have pot belly, <laughs> you, know, you get it, that are struggling, we're struggling, we're struggling. And we don't even know what we want to do. And you still like, okay, I'm going to help this, this hundred men and I'm going to help them fix themselves in the next six months. And you tell well, us- What you're saying is not unique, okay? Because yeah. people will spend $1,500, they call them tips. There's an app where you can get tips from yeah. celebrities, mm -hmm. musicians, and you know they give them tips. And But we can't, whatever. I can't afford, I can't afford, well, 1,500. No, no, no. What I'm saying is what, what I'm saying is you're saying five dollars, but the concept yeah. is not that foreign because yeah. you'll pay you'll pay an actor like LeBron James fifteen hundred or five thousand yeah. dollars for five minutes just to ask him one question. You see mm -hmm. what I mean? And 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 so that's very, very, very good. Very good the the whole yeah. but, but for layout. us in the, in the environment that we want to create this is to keep ourselves. Right. We want to keep ourselves in this place. OK, yeah. so that, you know, and it's not about the money for us. But at the end of the month, you you realize that you've made a lot of money just using the half. Because right. if I ask 100 young guys to pay me one dollar each for the next 30 minutes, when I'm done, that's a hundred dollars. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's I'm done in hundred dollars. And now if you pay me 10 percent of that, you take home 90 and you can do the, that class in, in three times in a day. Morning, afternoon, and night. Right. Exactly. And that's $270 in a day. Yeah. And then people will gladly give you the $1, especially when you bring value. Exactly. And especially in the community. Right. Because we won't want to give it to people for free. We're going to go and campaign in the inner communities and tell them about the app and tell them about the opportunity and tell them it's just one dollar to attend this man's class, and what you're gonna get in this class for the next two weeks, it's gonna change your life. Right, yeah. absolutely. Right. You can't even spend one dollar at McDonald's and, and be satisfied. So one dollars, you can. So I, for me, I'm just saying everybody will have to pick their own price. I don't mind teaching people, you know, life skills to get yeah. better. You know, I don't mind teaching people how to pay off their their mortgage. Of 30 years in five years, and how right. I did mine. I don't mind to, to tell people exactly what I did. You know, I can tell people exactly what I did, and if they can do the same thing, they'll be able to achieve the same result. Right. Maybe yeah. Five, maybe seven, or even in, in eight years to be financially stable. And I can do that for five dollars in 30 minutes. Right. That's not yeah. a lot of money, you know, but that's the goal. We're going to create that educational space. So that you can teach us, like even if right now most of us as small business owners, we can't afford lawyers, right? Because to get a lawyer is expensive. The ones right. that are called right now is this for power session is hundred dollars. Okay. How many power? How many power session am I gonna get? 
if I get a power session with Fraser and it and it's not gonna work out, I pay 400, I find George, I buy another 400. Yeah, yeah, it works. <laughs> Believe it or not, there's some people that sell for lawyers spend almost ten thousand dollars just trying to find a lawyer, just yeah. to see they're trying to do. Same so concept. how are we gonna survive? The question is, how are we gonna survive as black people? We're not meant to. You gotta understand that the system wasn't built for us so, to be so now now you're answering the question. So now we understand the system and the games, so we're gonna make it work for ourselves. Right. In our own system. The old saying is if a system doesn't work for you, you build your own system. We That's had right. our own system before, but yep. the problem of it is, y'all remember, there's two words, two things that stopped us economic and social. They had to beat it. It couldn't be one thing. When we figure out the economic part of it, they beat us socially. They got within mm -hmm. our communities. They beat our communities up. Implement certain things that add to this value: drugs, domestic violence, over policed. Now, 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 now. Can I stop you there for one minute? Now you mentioned three things: drugs. Yeah. What's the second thing? Domestic violence. Domestic violence. Now that is also where we come in. We yeah. need. To, we need to find time. When we start equipping ourselves economically, we find time and go exactly. to these places and show love. I'm not a professional in this place, but I know I've seen a lot of black African-American women on the internet who are professionals in this thing. Right. Yeah. And they'll be more than happy to collaborate with me, you know, exactly. and with the support in, in court of yeah. all this diversity and inclu inclusiveness going on in all these big corporations. We're gonna take advantage of that and go and educate and help to create healing in our communities. Right. Exactly. So that we can start reducing this thing that is a pandemic and is, is killing us. Exactly. Because that is the goal. We, we can't save the world, but if we start now and then we can get 10 more people to think like the way we're thinking, we get 20 more people, we get 50 people, and exactly. we keep walking towards it. And we, we start educating ourselves that I know that I'm not black in definition of America because I'm African right. and I've never, yeah. I've never lived the life of an African-American. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if they see Fraser, George, and Yinka downtown and they're looking for black We're men. We're the same. <laughs> We're the same, exactly. Your point is that the point is, the same point people want to take the exact same point. We need to stop categorizing each other and stop saying a different type of this, different type of this, because we all one person. We got how to look at it, we bleed red. Hmm. You bleed red, you're the same person. It doesn't matter what white, black, yellow, Chinese, doesn't matter. You know, and our problem is in the United States, problem is we categorize ourselves so much to we take ourselves out of life, to the hmm. out of achievement, achievements, out of opportunities. You know, you think about it. We had our own black Wall Street. We had our own black towns. But guess yeah. what? When they realized that we were progressing without the need of them, they had to stop it. It's not a problem. Their fear is not us individuals. They fear us together. You remember, like George Penguin or George said, we can build nations in no time. It take them decades. Yeah, but the thing is this, Fraze, not to I want to add a little bit more value to what you're saying. The reason why. Harlem National Bank Bank yeah. failed was because of economics. I said this before. Yeah. In the Great Depression, they had over 80% of their loans were to the black sharecroppers in the South. Okay. And they guaranteed those loans. All right. Yeah. So when you're in a depression and your counterpart can't eat, but he sees you bailing hay, he sees you being successful, yeah. what is he going to do? He's going to say, okay, well, no. If I can't feed my family, there's no way Moses is going to feed his exactly. family, and he burns up all his crops. Now yep. that debt that was that was that was secured for that season of sharecropping doesn't yep. get paid. So it's just like the housing crash in 2007. When you're overloaded with debts that people can't get paid back, what happens? You lose the farm. People don't know this, but Google it. The National yep. Bank of Harlem was bought by Bank of America. <laughs> okay. Yep all the way back then. And that happened in Black Wall Street when they understood, I, I hate to use this word, but this is how they classified them. They used to call them nigger pennies. 
when they understood that those pennies became dollars and we were very successful in Black Wall Street in Kansas, they couldn't handle that because they were suffering. So why should we have? There, there was a Black Wall Street in Oklahoma too, right? Yeah, right. True. And right. I watched, I watched that video and- Yeah, I, right. But the I, question, I, I, I never remain the same again. Right. But y'all, add up to that too. You gotta remember, white banks had what they call secure fund, even a losses. Red banks did not have the opportunity because they were not allowed to get that insurance or right. not told about that insurance. If a bank of America go down, you burn their crops. They ain't crying. You know why? Because that money is secure and it's secure, it's insured. So they go that money back time too. They will take mm -hmm. your property, ain't gonna resell your property. It got paid by the insurance company and it got paid by what you think you owe them and take your little money you made this part and sell it to somebody right. else make more money. So right. the thing is, most black banks didn't have the opportunity to buy that insurance because you know why? There's only white collar parts only. So of course the bank hall of failed. Of course other banks failed because of the fact they didn't have that security that the other banks have. Now take that same security and gave the bank of Harlem to the Bank of America. Then they buy them? No. They've been a whole too. Well, so so, so now what, what is the way forward? You know, I, I know that I'm trying to do my own part, you know. Yes. Yeah. That's why we have to have um, conversation, discussion, and people talk about it so we can yeah. people know that, oh, this is what this Melanin People app stands for. But beyond that, that's why I mentioned that I, for my, myself right now, I need more people. I need more people to provide the other um, parts. Exactly. That I need. I need other people to provide it. You well, know, let me ask you. To build more did apps. You, did you reach out to Killer Mike? You know, Killer Mike started his own bank. He's a partner in a black owned bank. I, I haven't yeah. reached out to Killer Mike. You know, I try to message them on Instagram. I don't know their email. I don't I have a PR person. You know, I've sent a lot of emails out to celebrities. Nobody responds back. You How know, about the black, black owned banks and black owned credit unions? Yeah. Quite I, I haven't done that. And okay. you know what? I'm I'm trying to stay away from things that would get me in debt. Right. Right now, the way that the company is right now, we don't owe nobody. Right. Yeah. And that's but you can do insurance. But you know, too, you can do, they have insurance called lost equity insurance, where it basically what your company is, you take a loan take a loan out. That that actually the insurance covers you up to 90% of that loan. So say for instance, what average person pays 10% within the next three to five years you, of the loan. You pay at least 10% of that loan. So the problem is serious, 90% of secure. So once you pay that 10%, you still secure it. It gives you a little flexibility in your bid operations. So when you actually operate it, you basically have a cushion. Yeah. So you but, you, but, but, but like you said, you said some yeah. of these systems are not created for us. No. Now, if you, look, if you look at the way things are done, Right. I would prefer that Fraser comes in and say, Yinka, this is a fifty thousand yeah. dollars. Judge comes in and say, All right, all I have is one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Okay. Then another Yinka comes in and say, All right, I can do one fifty. Right. And then I say, What's the equity in there? And then you understand the goal, the business plan, the the market. Yep. You no. Know, and and you 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 tell me, Oh, I have this connection. We can get to this place. I have this guy. Was really solid in digital marketing. We can get us from where we are right now to 250,000 users in the next six months. And I said, all right, that's why I'm trying to raise money. How much is going to cost us to get this guy? And the guy said, all right, I, I'm, I can take equity and I can get, I can take money or I just want money. And he says, I, I want $125,000. And we yeah. know that that guy is a machine on his own that can make things happen. That's why our white counterpart raise money. Right. Yeah. Because you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to be in debt. Right. That's why yeah. they have all these plans, and they go to you know VC, they go to angel investors. Yeah. That's why we need to wake up, and it's not. I'm, I know for sure that the black people in America who have the money to support, they're millionaires. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So that I, I don't want to. I don't want to go into such a place that you know makes everything complicated and complicated and that's right now right now everything is so simplified if yeah. you ask me how much do i hold some i don't owe anybody anything you know everything is paid for the app is paid for i run really lean i use infrastructures that are really lean not cheap but efficient for what yeah. we're running right now and it's working 
So there's no need for any any debt, you know. Right. Yeah. And if you look at the tech industry, most people like we read online and we study all these companies, they don't go for loans. They go for equity crowdfunding, angel investors, venture capitalists, exactly. you know. And those guys understand the market and then they pump money in them. And once they pump money in them, they also find, you know, black celebrities who can you can we can motivate right people to, to use the app and that's to go for it. And that's it. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. Sure. The plan is all laid out. If we get Tiffany Adish right now, and she said, guys, go download, they're gonna download. If it gets right. no right now, she said, go down or or or, or, or Sean, Sean Corbs, P Diddy, yeah. they're gonna go download. We right. got all these people. You go on Instagram, they have 70 million people following them. You know, they tell them to go download right now. They go download the app. Right. Yeah. True. You see? So, listen. So we, I believe that we, for us, what I've been thinking for a long time is that I don't think black people really need the money because we got the people. Right. We just, you'd need the people, your people to wake up and support what you're doing because you got the people. We have the people. We are millions and millions of people. Yeah. You go, right. you go, you go right now, you go on Instagram, you go check um, um Sean Cobbs right now or PDD. I don't even know how many followers. He has a lot. Yeah. You know, Dr. Dre, all of them, Killer Mike, they all have. They have a lot. A lot of people following them. Right. And they know the challenges. Like I'm looking at Dr. Dre right now, it's 5.6 million people. Yeah, true. So tell everybody real quick, we're towards the end of our interview, tell everybody where they can find you and your app on social media. All right, you can find us. We're on iOS, so you can find us on the Apple Store, easy. Melanin people. It's not melanated people. It's melanin people. M-E-L-A-N-I-N and people, like all of us together. Right. You can find us on Google Play Store. We're right there. And you can find us on our website, melaninpeople.com. You can find us on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter. We're all everywhere. So if you go Google, if you can't find anything, just go on Google. Just type Melanin People out. Okay. It's going to so, bring it up. <laughs> so, I'm going to hear one more thing for you, go to You go back to HBC. Did you know that if you offer the students a credit for working with your app in their marketing department, the school will sponsor your app. All right. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna connect with you on that. You know, Just someone told me that already, right. but I'm gonna connect with you on that. Yeah, because I know a lot of people that uh, apps they came up with, like um, certain companies, the marketing company, New York City, other places, got to get ABCs and start offering programs. They get internships to their students, and at the same time they give them credit back. So the school get notoriety and credit, and also too, they pump your ad your app for free. So in moment, if students support each other, alumni support each other. So guess what? Every and then my average school alumni at HBC is thirty thousand plus. Right. And they also doctors, lawyers. So guess what? They start downloading your app. You know why? Because you're part of their alumni and helping their alumni get notoriety and jobs. And once once you get established, now you can start establishing employment for that school. So now they, they secure a link to employment. So you make, make, now you prove your value. To the school at the same time, you put the value of your app to the school and making students better at what they do best. Young mm -hmm. minds are a wonderful thing. So, give you the last minute tips on somebody want to start their own app and how would they go about doing it? All right. So, you want to start your own app? Um, I'm a non technical founder, but I'm technical to a point where I save a lot of money. I'm a certified. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Uh, I'm a certified Scrum Master, and I have experience in business analysis. So I I can tell you what user story is, text text scripting. I can design my own UI, which which is a user interface. I have some experience in user experience design. You know, so I save a lot of money on that path. I finish all the work, and then I find distributed teams to work as developers for me. And it's important for you to also build your skills. And you can build skills easy. You can learn how to code online um, without spending money. There are free places online where you can learn. Um, okay. And so you can also learn for cheap. If you go to places like udemy.com, 
you know, you can link tech classes for nine dollars, nineteen dollars, and it's gonna be a whole cost. You know, so I've taken classes in ethical hacking, I've taken classes in Amazon Web Services, cloud infrastructure, and trying to build myself up to understand the lingos and to understand how things work. Right. So that is a place where I need I think you should focus on if you want to start building your own app. Now, to understand how to hire um, developers, it's a big risk. And because I've been doing this for several years, I know the questions to ask. Sometimes, I actually right now, I know how long it's going to take you to do a part of a job. Right. Because I've learned how to do some coding myself. Sometimes I just tell them, hey, what? Don't relax. Give me five minutes. I'm going to make this work. And I go to the back end and make it work myself. And they're surprised. I just tell them, oh, why don't you do it this way instead of doing this way? So that helps me to cut a lot of um, time. And because it's important for you to understand the market you're trying to get into. Right. So I'll tell you what. If you want to start your own app and build it, and as you can see, I haven't raised a million dollars yet. And it's and we're, and we're working. And it's working. And that means you can also do it freely. It means you can do the same job. And right now we haven't raised a lot of money, but we've get thousands of people to download the app. And there are ways to do that. So if you want to build your own app, get some education. Understand the processes of developing an app. Understand the skills that you have. And the fourth skill that I think you need to have is, you know, customer um, service skills. You know, you understand what you want to provide for your people, how you want it to work, the kind of experience you want them to have. Once you have that skill and you have the empathy, you know, then you can go ahead and create your own app. Right. Also, make sure that you, you you learn simple line of codes like HTML, you know, just learn how to read codes, learn how to write some codes, understand the things that you need and get mentors. Right. Okay. Yeah. Have friends that you can call that they can help you out and people that are also technically inclined. Right. And for the most part, you can make make it happen. You don't need to 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 to, to write codes, um, unless another way to do it is take some time, maybe six months, and learn how to code. Okay, <laughs> really learn how to code and start building it yourself. But that's a right. long way. Right. Like I told one of my friends was trying to create this workspace for for Africa, where we can put our projects on it, and then we can support people all over Africa. On the projects that they're working on, on agriculture and things like that, he's been working on it for almost two years. And when he started, I said, "No, why don't you get someone that can write this code, and then you do some part of the job and take some load off your chest, so that you can achieve this thing and move in a faster way." He said, "No." Four months ago, he had to come back and say, "Guy, I think I have to go your direction." <laughs> <laughs> I've done this several times. And you know what, guys? This is not the first startup that I've made. The first one that I make is called Fresh Hires. And Fresh Hires was a social professional platform for young students, graduates just leaving college to showcase their skills in videos, pictures, and documents and self-brand themselves. And that failed, it failed miserably. Even though we're able to build it, it failed in terms of marketing. I also tried to do a dating app for African people and African Americans. It failed. And some other things that I've worked on, right? Yeah. So I've learned that this is a way to do it. This is another way to do it, you know? And I run really lean. I run really lean. So a lot of the things that I need to pay people for, I, I get the skills and I learn how to do them. Right. So right now, for me, once we respond, I need to hire people who are really professionals. Not the one that I'm doing right now. I'm just trying to go, go, go. I yeah. need people. <laughs> I need real people who know about design, UX, UI. People who really know the, the, the how to make things happen. And But for now, we're still doing it the way we're doing it, and we're getting results. And I just want to ask people, if you're watching this video today or listen to the sound of my voice, Download the Melanin People app. This is the app for us if you have the Melanin scan. This is not an app for segregation. It's not an app for racial you know, divide. This is an app for us to come together and more intentionally support one another. It's an app that we're going to open up our API very soon, which is called Developer Tools. 
and the African developers, African American developers can also start creating their own apps that we can integrate into the Melanin People app. Like I said before, if you have your own app right now, a payment gateway that is working really well, we just have to create that API and, you know, we start making money together. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you have games that people can play, if you have emoticons that's going to showcase the African-American culture or the African-American heroes and you can build it into our chat or our messaging app, we're going to let you do that. So this is a big project. It's a it's it's a it's a tech company, and one of the things we want to also be able to do because we are focused on business and 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 improving self improvement, you know, for our community. That is what the app is focused on. We want to be able to do the Melanin People Conference, the actual Melanin People Conference, bringing all of us together under one roof. Where we're gonna come and enjoy the music, the fashion, the entertainment, see our professionals, and buy from the businesses, right. and get yeah. our speakers to come in from different parts of the world, and just have fun. We want to be able to do that in the U.S. and be able to take it to Africa also, and do that in Africa and also in Europe. That's the vision that we have. So, you know, it's big, and I welcome anyone who wants to be a part of the team. You know, I welcome you guys to to you know we can talk about that later on, because this yeah. is a huge project, and and one man can do it. You know, right. but it, the the groundwork and the foundation has been has been laid, right? All right. Well, and let's let me, you you know what? Right now, even with the number of people that we have, if I go right now and approach booking um let me say um, hotels, or or flight or um air air flights, air transportation industry, or banks. You know, like Chase, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, City. You know, they can start running adverts on our on our on our app right now. Yeah, and they can pay. Let's say each one of them just say, "Oh, we're gonna do this for fifty thousand dollars a month," because they they spend millions and millions on ads every month, right. even every day. Fifty thousand for them is nothing. Now, if you get ten of those companies to do that in a month, it's already half of half a million dollars. I'm just letting you guys into the to, into the to see what's going on. When you log into Facebook and you log into Instagram and you log into Twitter, that's what's going on. Exactly. Right. 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 Money is going on. It's right. <laughs> so, definitely so, all good. So listen, yeah, so I, I, I'm open um, right now. I'm trying. I'm getting information from people. I'm listening to different kinds of people. You know, people coming up and saying they're interested in working with me. Uh, you know, I'm open to that. And I just want to make sure that I, I get the right people on the team so we can raise funds and we can move forward and, and, and you know, change, change our world for better. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, listen, we appreciate you. We want to definitely thank you for being on the show. Thank and, you, sir. Uh, we got to hold it right there. Um, we'll talk more offline about some things that uh, we can definitely, definitely put definitely. in place. So definitely. Uh, Appreciate yeah. you for coming on the show. Thank you. How can I how can I watch the playback of the video? You don't have to worry about that. I'm gonna send you the link after the show. After the show. Right. On, on Facebook. All right. So I can share it to people and the people can watch and and then we're gonna I'm gonna see how we can break it down and also put it on Facebook, Instagram, and everywhere so people can know more about your show, about your programs and everything. Appreciate it, brother. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Fraser. And Absolutely. I want to connect with you, Fraser and George, or, or later on. Um, well, definitely. And so we can talk, and you know, we can we can brainstorm. Yeah, Are you in, well. you in New York too, New Jersey? New Jersey, I'm from Miami. Oh, <laughs> you're, in Miami. <laughs> Miami. And then, and then you're in New New Jersey, right? Yeah, I'm in New Jersey. New Jersey. <laughs> All right. So yeah, yeah, you know, it's part of the things I want to be able to do, especially now that COVID is. You know, we're trying to get rid of COVID, but I don't know. Is yep. to be able to do like uh, the melanin people conference, like not the big conference, like small yeah. conferences. We can do in New Jersey, we can do in Florida, you know, gotcha. we can do in Chicago, in Atlanta. And so getting people like you will help us to be able to do that because Absolutely. Of small Absolutely. business owners in your locality, in your state, and we can create the event. Mm -hmm. And that that's that's gonna be good. Absolutely. Oh, well, we'll keep it there. Thanks for being on. We appreciate definitely you, appreciate you. And uh, that's our show.
I know we ran a little bit late, but we want to thank you guys for being with us. And check out that app, the Melanin People app on Android and Apple I.O. Hey, this is George. Hey, this is Frank. That was Real Talk with George and Frazier. We want to thank Yanka for being on the show with us. Well, definitely.